Hi, I'm Richard Byrne. In this video, I'm going to show you 10 features of Google Meet that you should know how to use if you're using it to teach your classes online. Let's go ahead and get started. And the first thing you should know how to do is when you start your meeting, you can enter a nickname. Let's do Mr. Byrne as my meeting nickname. That's a little bit easier for students to remember because they can now just go to meet.google.com, sign into their Google accounts, and type in Mr. Byrne, and I know that they'll be able to join my meeting. But they won't be able to join my meeting until I've actually come along and started the meeting with that meeting nickname. Now, you should also know that if you use this meeting nickname, no one else in your domain can use the same meeting nickname. So I'll hit continue and we're going to start our meeting. So here it is. Let's go ahead and now join our meeting. You can see our meeting nickname is right there. And let's take a look at some of the meeting safety features that you can use in Google Meet. So first of all, you'll notice that my background here is all kind of blurred out. And that is a function that I was able to use down here in the bottom right corner, under more options, we'll see the option for changing the background. And in my case, I have decided to blur out my background. But you can see there's other options available that you can put in place. Right, so I have a modern living room. I've got an evening light. I've got all kinds of other options back there. Or you can see you just blur your background or slightly blur your background or have no background at all other than what's really behind you. And that's a handy feature for you and for your students if you want to hide some things or you know, protect some privacy in your home if you're doing Google Meet from home. Now the next thing we want to do is over here in our little bottom left corner we have host controls. And here we have the options for quick access and when you use this, okay, when it's turned off, anyone who isn't invited has to ask to join. So that way, you don't get people just randomly joining. You can restrict participants from sharing their screens, and you can even turn off their option to send chat messages. Now you can go in here and look at more host settings. And down in your more host settings, you can also look at your video options and your audio options as well. So the next feature to check out is the option for captions. And captions is great because you can turn it on for yourself and your students can turn it on for themselves as well so that they can have the meeting caption. And generally, Google does a fairly good job of accurately transcribing and captioning your discussions. Now, if you mumble or you talk a little too fast, sometimes it doesn't keep up, but generally it does a pretty good job. I can turn off those captions as well. Next to that, we have the option for raising hand and lowering hand, and your students can raise their hands to signify that they want to speak in the meeting and they can also raise their hands. Now, speaking of in the meeting, when we go down here to our bottom right hand corner, when you have a bunch of students in here, you might want to change the layout. And you can go to a automatic configuration, a tiled layout, a spotlight, or a traditional sidebar. I like the tiled layout and I can drag to specify how many tiles I want to have. If I have a smaller class, I might only need 16 tiles. If I have a larger class, I might need 49 tiles or somewhere in between. Now, when I go to present my screen over here in the bottom right hand corner, when I go to present now, I can present my entire screen, which will be everything that's on my desktop. I can present just a window and that'll let me specify any of the Chrome windows that I have on my desktop. Or I can select just a tab and it'll let me specify just one of the tabs that I have open 
on my computer. So if I have a YouTube video already queued up in another tab, I can go to just tab view and select just the tab that I want to share. Or in this case here, I might share just the Google Tour Builder tab that I have open or the Tour Creator tab that I have open. Now, let's take a look at a couple other quick little features down here in the bottom right hand corner. One of my favorite tools, I wrote a blog post about this a couple of weeks ago. One of my favorite tools for virtual and hybrid meetings is the Jamboard option. And I can open up a brand new whiteboard and I can create this Jamboard where I can draw, I can create diagrams, I can do all kinds of cool things on this tool. Maybe I just want to do a quick little math problem. I can do that. And when I'm ready to share it, I can share it directly with my students. Or if I save it for later, I can add it into Google Classroom. And last but not least, in our bottom right hand corner, we have the option to record the meeting. And when you record the meeting, it's important to remember that you have to have permission from all participants in order to record that meeting. And your local school district may have some more guidelines for you about recording those meetings. So those are 10 features of Google Meet that you should know how to use as a teacher. Now, not all of these features are available in all domains right now. So if you don't see them right now, you may see them in the next couple of weeks. And you may not see all of these features on all devices, again, depending on the kind of device you use and how your school district's IT department has decided to manage those devices and manage your domain. As always, for more tips and tricks like this, please check out freetechforteachers.com or subscribe to my YouTube channel.